Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our second annual virtual celebration party. Last year, we held a virtual rug party because rug hooking week at Sauter Village was canceled. The event was live this year, and it was wonderful as usual. So this virtual event is designed to give those of you who could not attend a peek at the festivities and to encourage you to attend next year if you can. This, of course, is sponsored by Rug Hooking Magazine. I want to remind you that we have a great website, a free newsletter, a print magazine, and a book club. And that's where you can order the new celebration book. It's available now. Please check out all the other offerings and join in the fun. A reminder about a few housekeeping issues. If you get disconnected, you can reconnect using the same link. You will not be interrupting the talk. We are recording today's webinar, so if you have technical difficulties, don't worry. We'll send you a link and you can watch it later. And it will be posted on the Rug Hooking website very soon. So now on to Rug Hooking Week. It's a one of a kind experience. I'm just back from the show myself. And as usual, I'm incredibly inspired and energized. The Sauter Village community is welcoming and loves rug hookers. The teachers and workshops are enticing. The camaraderie is fabulous. So put it on your list of places to go. You won't be sorry. Rug Hooking Magazine partners with Sauter Village to bring you the celebration exhibit each year. Here is Kathy Wright explaining a little more about Rug Hooking Week. I'm Kathy Wright, director of Rug Hooking Week, and this is our 25th year here at Historic Sauter Village in Northwest Ohio, uh, not far from Toledo. And we offer, we are the largest annual rug hooking event in America, and we offer between 30 to 40 classes every year in all levels from beginner to advanced in many different techniques and design elements and materials. And we have workshops in the evening for those who work. And we have a wonderful selection of between 15 to 20 vendors so you can shop for materials, supplies, equipments, and all kinds of fun extras. Our exhibit every year is between 500 to uh, 800 pieces and we have an extensive feature exhibit this year it is punch and yarn the women's boat centennial and David Gullshoot we also had special exhibits by Judy Carter and Michelle Palmer and our main exhibit which is open to the public is open to everyone of all levels to exhibit their work we hope you will join us here at Sauter Village. We have an incredible historic village for you to visit with a new 1920s Main Street. It's um, a once in um, an artist's lifetime to come and exhibit their art, take new classes, network, and make new friends. So join us here at Sauter Village at Rug Cooking Week in August. We are so pleased to be able to say that celebration is indeed truly international. We're pleased to include several countries in this year's celebration book. Here are a few of the rugs from around the, from around the world. We had entries from Japan. There was an entry from Hungary, <clears throat> United Arab Emirates, <clears throat> Canada, of course, and many entries from the United States. In the past two years, we've added cash prizes to celebration. The creators of the three rugs rated highest by the judges received a check acknowledging their accomplishments. Here are the three winners for 2021. Canadian Geese by Helen Mar Parkin. Eurasian Blue Tit Reflections by Sandy Ducharme. And Way of Life by Susan Ferraro. Extraordinary pieces all. Now for the fun. Gene Shepard was a teacher at Rug Hooking this year, and I asked him to talk with a few of the celebration hookers. So we rounded up a few of them, met early one morning before the show opened, and had a few very short conversations. Thanks to Andy and Jeanette from Souter Village for videotaping these snippets. You will see they were done on the fly, so they are not professional grade. Our goal is to give you a taste of what you find at Rug Hooking Week, 
and to meet some of the participants. So pardon any glitches you might see. We hope the stories you hear entertain you. Jean, take it away. I'm happy to uh, welcome Helen Mar Parkin and this beautiful Canadian snow geese rug that you did. Helen, it's a wonderful celebration entry. I'm so glad that I can be with you today. I, now this is a, a McGowan, J. McGowan Flynn pattern. Did you add any embellishment to the design as you interpreted it? Yes, uh, I added the swirly uh, element of the sky and a few other changes uh, because I wanted to give the, the, the rug a story. The, the story for me was that these geese have landed and can't find any food in the snowy landscape. The storm is approaching and they've decided that it's time to go so they're looking to the south and getting ready to take off. So I like to do that when I hook a rug is give a story to it and that it gets me interested and excited about the design as I work. Well and we can tell that story. I, I gotta tell you studying this from a picture I could tell there was a, some three-dimensional stuff here, but I actually oh. thought those were deep pools. You did such a good job awesome. with your shading on that. It's okay. one of my favorite parts. What's your favorite part in this rug? Well, I'd have to say it's the barn. I, for some reason, that came out, the shading, it just came out so well. I like that a lot. Um, it's, That's my it's got great shading <laughs> everywhere. I, I like the little arc of the neck and the way you change your colors as you go up into the tree. It's just a great little piece, and you ought to be very thrilled with oh, it. Thanks, Gene. So good to be with you, Helen Mark. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm with a friend, Denise Peacock, and we're so glad to be able to look at this wonderful rug that you did, the cotton pickers. Uh, we should, uh, I guess we should disclose I've seen you work on this rug, so it's no surprise to me that it wound up in celebrations. So what was, what was your favorite part on this rug? There was actually two parts. One was the face of the girl and the basket weave that I did on the basket. Now that basket weave took a little bit of time, I know, because I was watching you do it. <laughs> We were in a class with Jean Shepard, <laughs> and it actually took me about three days to just figure out the technique on that with his help. Well, you did a wonderful job. It's such a luscious color palette, and uh, I know we worked hard to get that wool together, but you, you have to be able to put it in in the right places, and you did a great job. I think my favorite piece is, is this part, is this section right here of the face and this woman, well, I think she's looking for something, uh, a better life than what she's experienced right this moment. And it's, it's, to me, it ha it's a picture of hope. Yes, that's what it is to me when I saw the original painting of it. And um, you helped me so much in learning about doing, using color instead of just a black face. We use plums and browns and turquoises for the highlight and that just set her off. Well, you did a great job and I'm, I'm glad you come all the way from Arkansas to share with us today because it, it's, a, it's a wonderful piece and a tribute to the original artist. And what was his name? John Doyle. Oh, it's, a, it's a great rug. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. This is Jan King and she's hooked a wonderful rug for a special person. Why don't you tell us about Marks and okay. who he is and how he got that name? Okay, will do. Uh, Marks is my two-year-old grandson. Uh, he is named after my father, uh, Mark Simpson. So his name is Mark Simpson King. Um, when I decided to do a rug for him, I absolutely wanted a rug that would grow with him. I didn't want a rug that would just, um, when he was three, he, he had outgrown it. So what I tried to do is, because he's named after my dad, I tried to incorporate um, realistic old cars, trucks, and so forth that my father might have seen in his day. Are, are any of them ones that your family has owned, like the tractor or something Not like that? Not the tractor, but this car over here, the, the red and green, I'm not sure. To me, it looks like a DeSoto or DeSoto, and that's what we had when I was a little girl. Well, I, how, does I he, don't know. how does he like this rug? He couldn't care less. 
Trust me, when he's like five, he's going to like it. And I think I drove a tractor like you that. You might have. Uh, it, it's, it's very interesting the way you put all those in there. I think it's a great boy rug when, yeah. you know, when you're yeah. trying to get things. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Program. And I would think he would notice that biplane up there. I too. hope so. I love the, the Volkswagen um, van. Uh, bug or what is that it's a, van. a van because i feel like i was probably one of those when i was growing all up all right well, <laughs> it's so nice of you to uh, be with us today and we appreciate this backstory to that Good. because i think all of us uh, have someone young in our life we'd like to create something special for mm -hmm. that they'll like for a long time so we're so good to have you thank you you're so well <laughs> this is mary mcgrath and you've hooked a very special icon and uh, I'm so glad it's in celebration and I'm glad you're here to tell us about it. W uh, tell me how you decided to hook this rug and what your favorite part is. Okay, so um, about 2017, a very dear friend of mine, Sean, came to me and she was looking for me to hook a piece for her church, which uh, she absolutely loves. And so it kind of set me on the path trying to find the right piece. Um, her church is called St. Mary's. She knew she wanted Mary in the rug. And um, I was on vacation, ironically, in 2018 and happened to come across an image that Teresa Colgate had painted. I reached out to her. She's an artist in Michigan. I reached out to her and asked her if she would adapt it into a hooked rug pattern and uh, she generously did. So um, my favorite piece probably is uh, Baby Jesus's face, just the way it came through. It comes through very um, soft and um, innocent. So I guess it, it um, captured what I was looking for. Well, it's a great job. I, I referred to it as an icon. It reminds me a little bit of classic icons and even to the way that you've had it framed with a kind of a gold leaf sort of a frame. But there's so many little glistening spots in this that I like. Uh, I think his face is wonderful. So often Jesus looks sort of pained or something. Right. And uh, I particularly like the eyes. The, you, could, you could fall into those eyes. They are so huge and, and, and wonderful. But you just bring up all these little glinty bits that are here and there. And just the subtle way you change colors from the hearts and the, the little border to that. It has a real rich look to it, but it's not overly done. But this is odd, but I particularly like your border work using those little, are they three oh, cuts or four together. cuts? It was done in entirely in three cuts. So, well, and yeah. she changes three cuts, one, two, three, four times just for that little border, but it just gives such a nice little touch to it. I, and so this is hanging in the church? It is hanging in their vestibule area. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and um, unfortunately they're actually having a large celebration this weekend, uh -oh. I know, and so it wasn't able to be there, but um, it'll it'll be returning shortly thereafter. Well, uh, they, they can say they have a publicized no, piece, an exactly, award-winning piece exactly. that will be on display. Well, it's exactly. lovely, and you did a great job, Thank as usual. So much. Thank, Thank you so Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. This is Susan Ferraro, and uh, she's hooked a rug for celebrations just this year called the Way of Life. Yes. And it's it's intimately connected to who you are and people you know. Yes, it is. Tell us about it. Um, well, this, the gentleman um, that's up top is Al Johnson. He is my neighbor. He's in his early 90s. He still goes out fishing every day. Uh, I live on an island in Maine, and it's a fishing village and lobstering village. So um, it is a way of life still. Uh, this was actually a photograph. Um, by Walter Brightwell that was taken um, on a larger boat on looking at the dory um, and it was from the late 1950s and he was known for really rich color oil uh -huh. paintings so you use that as your inspiration yes oh it, it's a it's a graphic uh, kind of less is more kind of a thing because we see those guys out in the element and I love the the colors that you use. Now, while all the pictures of our rugs in celebration are good looking pictures, you really need to see this one in person to understand the depths of those nets. Now, you actually kind of hand knotted your own nets to make a 3D application. Is that correct? That's correct. And then yes. all those little fish at the bottom, like the one that you're wearing right here, did you uh, felt those yourself? Yes. 
and they just add so much in the bottom border of this piece Thank you. and it, it just brings everything together i love the way you have a gradation of colors in your water and just You've actually got little bits of sparkly fabric here and there yeah, to, have a little to, to get a little bit of that moonlight glinting over them as they work. Yes. Well, it, it's really nice, and the application of those three-dimensional things are, are particularly good and appropriate to this piece. So Thank you. It, it, it's, it's not just a way of life in a picture. It just really chronicles just something you're intimately familiar with and we're thankful that you sh shared that with us so Thanks. good to be with you today you too. thank you i'm with judy privet and we have a very special portrait of her father to look at and it's your father you never knew him because he passed away before you when you were just a little girl right right i was seven months old well tell um, me tell me about this picture this picture um I wanted to do a portrait of my dad, and I tried to find a picture of him holding me, but there wasn't any, and Donna Harkman, I was taking a class with her, and um, I came upon this picture, and it just grabbed me. I was like, this is the one, and I sent it to her. She did the pattern for me, and this was my first attempt at a portrait, and um, as we went, it was kind of an emotional journey. Well, sure, it would have to be. But um, I think the thing I loved about it was that I got his eyes right. And when my mom saw a picture of it, she was like, oh, those eyes, those eyes. Well, so if you I could sell your mother on it, then you know you did a good job. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe that's your first portrait. It's really great. Thank and you. there is something very arresting about this picture. Uh, I, like, I like to think, uh, since you don't know where it came from and who right. took it, maybe at your grandmother's, maybe somebody just said to him, you know, someday you're going to be a father. And that's why yeah. he has that wonderful look on his yes. face. Yes, yes. Because th that's a really sweet, nice look, and it's a yeah. nice memory. So. Yes. And I, I understand that one of your things you like to do because you got to pick out a tie for your dad. I did. It, this was... Um, Donna asked me if I wanted to do it in monochromatic or color, and I went, oh my goodness, color. I've never had a picture of my dad in color, and I finally got to pick out a shirt and a tie for my dad, which was awesome, and uh, it was such an emotional cleansing. Well, I am glad <laughs> that we get to celebrate that with you and Thank that you. it can be in celebration. It, it's a sweet tribute, but besides that, it's a really fine rug. You oh, did a thank great you. job. Thank you, Jean. I appreciate it. This is Linda Bell, who's uh, followed the lead of some of our other people in that you were inspired by a great painting that someone else did. Uh, tell us about the artist and the painting that you chose to do. It's called, well, I won't say who, what it's called because that tells the story. You tell it. The painting is called Cafe Terrace uh, Plus De Forum Aro. And it's by Vincent Van Gogh. And I was inspired to do this by a calendar that I had. Um, a, a Van Gogh calendar, and I loved the colors. Um, that that bright yellow green is just. And you dyed so the yummy. wool yourself. Yes, yes. Well, you it's, did a very good job. It's all hand dyed. And I, yeah. I like the way all these colors blend together, and then where you have a little purple person in there that just really picks it up. Yeah. You know, Van Gogh is one of my very favorite artists because I think he kind of paints like rug hookers, you know, lay wool in. Mm -hmm. And he's a great visual uh, inspiration, I think. And this is one of his more famous paintings. What's your very favorite part of it? I think the yellow green area. I just, the color just wows me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's quite nice and it's, it's, uh, it, 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 it ended up being just a perfect little piece and it's good to be able to look at it today. So do you hang it in your home? 
Um, no, I have it on an easel in my studio. Oh, okay. Well, it's out in public site where people can see it and you can be inspired oh, yeah. by it every day. Oh, yeah. Well, this scene has inspired a lot of people and your version will too. So Thank it's you. really good to have you in celebration this year and to be with us here at Sodder. It's good to be here. Well, this yes. is the greatest place ever. <laughs> All right, yeah. thank you. Okay. Well, I'm with Grace Collette, and uh, this is one of the uh, flashiest rugs we have in the celebration uh, exhibit this year. But then again, his name is Elvis, so what do you expect? Tell us about him. Well, he's my sweet guy out in the back of the barn, and uh, and he is as flashy as this. And he does sing to me every single morning and he deserved a rug. Well, I guess so. Now this is a golf shoot pattern yes. that you have embellished and done some other things too. For mm -hmm. example, there's quite a bit, bit of three dimensional work. I, I think we call that trapunto, is it? Yes. That you've done. Uh, when you look at the picture, you can't tell that he sticks out that far. How deep is his body against the back? About three inches. Three inches. So yeah. you stuff that with just filling and things like that? Polyfill. And yep. then uh, if you can see with this camera shot, he is covered with all kinds of glitzy sequins, which I think most ro roosters feel like they have anyway. That's and right. And you just added them. He certainly looks fantastic. What was your favorite part to do about it? Actually, my favorite part is the part nobody even notices. What's that? There's about 25 of these black raspberries, and if you do a good job on them, nobody even notices they're there. But if you mess up, it's going to ruin the whole piece. So actually, I ended up doing these all in French knots with yarn. Okay. Well, now, I don't think... I'd say that nobody notices them because one of the things I liked about it, I just didn't happen to say, I like the fact that you bring these colors and they are sprinkled around this piece. So oh. the, it, it gives a lot of pop. I think these other softer, you know, yellow, green, blue things, uh -huh. uh, bits, they pop out more because you have that. So I would agree with you. Huh. And I mean, I think you could have used more sequins, but <laughs> maybe it got so heavy that you wouldn't be able to hang it. Well, he's really a fun rooster, and I have five hens, so I, I'm going to get a picture, and I'm going to hang it in my chicken coop. <laughs> Maybe it'll inspire them. <laughs> Thank you very Good much. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Well, I have Denny Seiler, and we're looking at a, another interpretation of a golf shoot pattern. Why did you pick this one, Denny? Well, I liked all the uh, elements. There are so many different elements in his paintings, and I like doing details. Well, that's a very detailed rug, and of course, w we can see a lot from the photograph in the in the celebration booklet. But when you're here, and you can really get up close and personal with it. Now, your wool is beautiful. How did you get that wool? Well, I. Um, I had this rug plan, color planned by Michelle Miccarelli mm -hmm. because it was planned for her class to happen last year. And it didn't happen as a class, but I continued to go ahead and make the rug. Okay, so you did it on your own? Or did you yes. have any consultation with her? Or? No, no. I, but I did send her pictures from time to well, time. Yeah. And, and she said, nice. Well. Uh, <laughs> It's very, very nice. I, I like it for a whole host of reasons. Uh, if I had no idea who hooked it, I would, I would like it anyway, because who, what's not to like about a wonderful elephant? I mean, it's great. And then uh, we're always glad to have a man in celebrations, and so it, it's kind of lonely here sometimes. So I'm glad you're a part of it this year. All right, thank you. So, and your very favorite part is what? I like the uh, center medallion and, and the palm tree is Kind of my favorite part. Plus, it you know it's a center focal point. Yeah, so. yeah. And then you added just a little bit of embellishment with a few sparkly bits and just a little bit here and there. But it's certainly appropriate to this piece. Right. I decided not to hook the tassels into it. I made these tassels out of a sparkle yarn, and you may not notice, but her necklace is a, a little piece of chain. Oh yeah. So those are my embellishments. Well, it's good. Now, how did you get started hooking? Well, I 
followed my wife around this uh, hooking uh, for about 15 years and I finally said, okay, I might as well join in. You, you might in. as well do it. I, I've known people, other men where that happened. It's just easier to join them, isn't it? Right. Does she share wool with you? Oh, yes. All right. Yes. Well, then it's a, it's a good relationship yeah, and a good have, arrangement. We have a tremendous stash. So. Well, that's <laughs> great. It's wonderful to have this and have you here today at Sauter. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Gene. Okay. This is Barb Powell, and we're here looking at her rug, which is just a special uh, rug. And uh, I love that spiral, but I'm going to let you tell us how you got that basic design inspiration. Well, when I was originally starting to look for inspiration, I wanted a spiral, I knew that, but so I went on the internet, and as you know, one thing leads to another, leads to another on the internet, and I ran across uh, spiral staircases, and I thought, oh, now we're getting close, and then I saw a spiral staircase that was, the photo was taken probably with a drone or a photo stick or something like yeah. that to get a straight vertical picture. And so that's what inspired this one. Well, it's lovely. I, I love, uh, we, you have to say color when you look at this to begin with, because <laughs> it's, it's a tour de force when it comes to color choices. But you have not just the color, you have them arranged in interesting ways and different things. And you did all the dyeing for I this did. rug. I bet <laughs> that took a while. Uh, two solid days in the dye pots of which all the, all the colors were strewn around the stove. So I had seven dye pots. We've all been there. We get that. <laughs> but uh, you ended up with some just beautiful things Thank that you. you wouldn't otherwise be able to get just, right. just to go and shop right. in somewhere for 15 minutes. So what's your favorite part on this? You know, I, I think the entire rug is. Um, I almost didn't send it in to celebration this year because the, there were a few things I didn't like. But my husband said, well, you have to. And well, he was right. <laughs> well, it would have been sad if you didn't send it in because we would have had no cover for the magazine. Can you imagine a gray cover that said celebration of hand hooked rugs and nothing on it? Now, this is your fourth time to be in celebration it is. and to wind up on the cover. That that is a, a big deal. And you should be very proud. I, I, I just find it very interesting. It's it's a rug that you can look at. Well, everyone we've looked at today is like this, yeah. but you can just find something else when you look at it. And the, the other thing I like about it, while you have all this wild color progression that's going on and lots of things going on, there's, there, there is a kind of a sameness in the fact that you have this. It, it, it's peaceful looking at that instead, oh, of, instead of uh, moving you around. It, thank even, you. Even on these techniques, it changes a lot, but yet you have this peaceful m mixing of values and it, it, it gives enough of a sameness to to make you feel comfortable and peaceful with looking at it. Well, we've talked about stashes, but all the all the values in um, the banisters were from the stash. <laughs> so. Well, I find that hard to believe that you'd have a big stash. stash. <laughs> Actually not. <laughs> not. <laughs> we, we get it completely. But isn't it wonderful when that stash comes in handy and it legitimizes you then buying more wool while you're here Absolutely. at Sauter because you may need it for your next exactly. run. Exactly. Well, thank you, Barb. It, it's beautiful. We're glad that you've been able to be with us today. Thank you, Jean, and thank you, Celebration. I'm overwhelmed at the, everything that's in this hall. Uh, it's a great place. Yes. It? Thank it you. Thank you. No broadcast about the Celebration exhibit would be complete without a talk with Deb Smith because you're the editor of Rug Hooking Magazine, but you're also the person who coordinates the, the, the Celebration uh, event uh, and contest anyway. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Celebration and particularly what your favorite part is. Celebration, as you know, is now in its 31st year and each year we publish uh, an edition of the winners of the celebration contest and so now we have a series of 31 fabulous books that are full of inspiration for any rug hooker anywhere um, my favorite part of, of celebration is when the entries are coming in they are spectacular and every day we are excited to turn on our computers and see what's been entered and we sit around our computer monitors and go oh my gosh did you see that one? Oh wow look at this it's it's so much fun um, and we gather all these together, put all the moving pieces uh, together to make sure that we have all the details that we need, 
contact and talk with all the rug hookers. It's, it's such a good feeling of community. And, you know, rug hooking is all about community, so the celebration is kind of like the, the apex of community for fabulous masterpieces and the rug hookers who hook them. Putting the book together, getting the stories behind all the rugs, it's so much fun. It's just, um, it's, it's the best part of the celebration. How important is it to be able to show these rugs at the solder event each year? Because it takes oh, a lot of work to pull that off. It does. We've had a partnership going back at least 14 years, 14, 15 years. And to be able to pull together as many celebration rugs as we possibly can to show all together in one venue is, is wonderful. You will never see all these rugs together again in one place. So it's a it's like the, the, the shining star on top of the celebration year to be able to bring these rugs all together and Solder Village in this, this wonderful Founders Hall venue, uh, it, there couldn't be a better place. Um, so you drive out to the middle of the cornfield in Western Ohio and you stay at the wonderful um, Heritage Inn and you immerse yourself in rug hooking for a week what can be better than that? I mean, that's 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 what it's all about. Certainly for our art form, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. And you I, get the fabulous teachers, terrific students, wonderful vendors. It's great. And I would say seeing so many rugs in person, uh, it's a very moving experience. <laughs> okay, Jean. <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> Thank oh, you're you for welcome. your expertise and for for speaking to some of our celebration winners. We have. You know, many, many rugs we haven't shown you. We had many hookers who we weren't able to talk to, but this gives you a taste of what Sol Celebration Rug Hooking Week at Solder Village is all about. So please put it on your calendar. Plan on coming. Uh, yeah, it's one of those shows you need to put on your bucket list. If you've never been, come at least one time, and then if you come, you'll, you'll probably be hooked. <laughs> Perfect. Sure. Thank you. If you're a member of our book club, you can get your copy of Celebration 31 for a 21% 20, discount. Join the book club online and add this beautiful book to your rug hooking bookshelf. We have a special sale for today's attendees. Past copies of Celebration are now on super sale. If you are missing any back copies, now is the time to get them. Use the promo code on the screen. The sale is good until the end of September. And for attendees today, we have a special offer for new subscribers. Go online to claim the deal. You see the information here. And remember to vote in the Celebration 31 Reader's Choice Survey. You can view all the Celebration rugs online at the Rug Hooking Magazine website and pick your five favorites. We report the winner of, this, of the Reader's Choice in the March, April, May issue next year. Be sure to cast your vote online. Look into the future. Planning for Rug Hooking Week 2022 is already underway. Mark your calendars, August 15th to August 20th, 2022. It'll be a spectacular show, I'm sure. We'll be there, I hope you join us. Thank you for coming to our virtual party. We enjoy your company. Remember, as of October 1, we will be accepting entries into, into Celebration 32. So get your best rug ready, take a good photograph and enter it this year. We love to see what you are sending in. You can watch this webinar again later or share it with your friends. You will find it on our website. And while you're there, take a look at our other webinars. You're sure to find something you like. Thanks everyone. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye and keep on hooking. See you, bye.